All right, guys. So today we're going to kind of review a little bit of the mean, median, and mode, uh, the three M's um, that we've been talking about the last couple of days. Um, really, I want to talk about the mean. And what if I'm given a list of data with a missing data point? And I'm given the mean. Can I find that missing data point? Well, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. And the answer is to the, is yes. So why don't you go ahead and uh, pause the video and attempt this problem. Remember that we do take Cornell notes in here. So make sure you pause the video when necessary. Pause the video now. Write down this do now. See if you can attempt this problem. All right, so what we need to do is find the missing value of x if the mean of this data or the average of the data is 24. So here we have an x value. I have all these other t uh, memberships here. Let me scroll down so we can get a little bit more context to this problem. The debate club membership, I have members over certain years. You can see that 2003 had the highest amount of members and it kind of declined from there. So let's take a look at what we need to do uh, to solve this problem. Uh, this is just a missing data problem uh, that we need to do. Uh, what if I forgot the year in which, uh, you know, how many members did I have in 2004 is basically the question. And I mean, it looks like it's about 25. Uh, but it's really hard to guess that. It might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less. Could be 26 or 27. But that's just a guess, and I want to be really exact with my answers. Well, we see here, we're actually given a lot, quite a lot here. It says that, it says, find the missing value of x if the mean of the data is 24. So we know that the mean is 24. We also know that the mean is found by doing the add over the count. And that's 24. So let's uh, just do a little bit of math here. Let's set this all up and get this ready for what we're talking about here. I'm going to move our I can statement here that we've been talking about down just a little bit. All right, so let's see if we can do this now. Well, I got to add all of these numbers up, 21, 19, 40, x, and 14. So what that's going to look like is this. We're going to have 21 plus 19 plus 40 plus the x value plus 14 all over the count. Well, how many, how many years are we talking about here? Well, We've got one, two, three, four, five data values, so we know that we're going to be dividing by five. And once all this math is done, we should have 24, because that's the mean. So I'm going to look at this top here, this top line, the numerator. And I'm going to do some combining like terms. Those like terms are 21, 19, 40, and 14. The unlike term is x. So I'm going to have x something over 5. Let's combine all these like terms. Let's take a 21 uh, plus 19 plus 40 plus 14. So again, that's 21 plus 19 plus 40 plus 14. That gives me a 94. So I have the x plus 94. All right. So now we know that that all is all going to equal 24. Just bringing this stuff down here. And now we just have a simple proportion to solve. There is a little bit of work to be done here. Um, but it shouldn't be any harder than what we did in second quarter. Let's do a little recap in here, though. Uh, I, I want to get x alone, but it's being touched by a divide by 5 and a plus 94. And we remember that when we're working backwards here, we want to get rid of the division first. So how to get rid of division? With multiplication. So we're going to multiply by 5, making sure to be equal and fair to both sides. These 5s cancel out, and it leaves me with x plus 94 on the left. And then 24... Uh, times 5 is 120, I believe. So 4 times 5 is 120. And then we're going to undo subtract uh, addition, which means we're going to do subtraction. 
Uh, the 94s over here cancel, and then that brings down the X. And that 120 minus 94 is 26. Well, we're done here. So my mis missing data value that we've been talking about this whole time, this one right here, that missing data value must be 26. So there were 26 members on this debate team in 2004. Okay, well let's move forward. We'll see a little bit more of a abstract problem here on this next slide. Uh, this is basically the same thing uh, without a context. It kind of has a context here. It's just not from a graph this time. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and give this one a shot just to kind of finish warming up here. It says the points scored by the football team uh, were 10, 21, 22, 12, 11, 15, 17, and then X. Not sure what that last score was, but I do remember that the average score was 14. So we just set this up like last time. To find the mean, we do 10 plus 21 plus 22 plus 12 plus 11 plus 15 plus 17 plus my last value that I don't know, x. I'm going to divide all of this by how many data points there are. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 data points. And because of add dividing by the count gives me the mean, the mean is 14. Next step is to add up all of these data values. So I need to take all these values here, 10, 21, sort of them for you, 22, 12, 11, 15, and 17. Those are all like terms. When we add all those up, we get 108. And then our left over here plus x. And then what's left over down here in the denominator divided by 8 equals 14. And if you weren't able to get past this point, then go ahead and pause the video and try this part again now. Remember, we have to undo division first, and the way we undo division is by multiplication. Over here, the 8s cancel out, and on the right-hand side, I need to do 14 times 8, which gives me 112. So on the right-hand side here is 112. On the left-hand side here, those 8s canceled out, so I'm just left with 108 uh, plus x. And the way I get x alone now is just to undo this addition over here. So subtracting 108 from both sides. 108 to cancel out. x equals 112 minus 108 is 4. So football team didn't do so good on that last, that last game they played. So if x is 4, that means this last game that this football team played only scored, scored 4 points. Okay, and that's how we find those missing data values. All right, for today's lesson, though, the, the meat and potatoes of today's lesson, I'd like you guys to learn about dot plots. Again, remember that we do take Cornell notes. Make sure that you get the I can statements. And the definitions and examples are probably the most important part of our notes. So you can go ahead and pause your video here to write this down. Please remember to summarize. You don't need to write everything. I mean, the data is really important. You'll need everything there. But the dot plot definition summarized to your liking so that it makes sense for you. All right, so you may have already read now that I definitely want you guys to be able to know what a dot plot is today. I also want you guys to be able to uh, compare uh, two sets of dot plots. So um, the idea of dot plots today isn't really the big focus isn't creating them, although we are going to review that. A dot plot is basically just a diagram that shows the frequency of data on a number line. Okay, we use x's or dot, since the name dot plot, in, in place of those numbers uh, in the data to represent the frequency in which we're seeing them. Let me show you an example of what I mean. So I've got a number line down here, and I've got a list of data points. Basically what this means is that I'm going to just put an x over each point on the number line every time a data shows up. So look, for instance, I have a data point negative 5 here. So I'm going to take an x, and I'm going to plop it over onto negative 5. And then a negative 4. And I think you guys are going to get the idea here. Negative 4. 
and then another negative 4. So actually we're going to stack it this time. And then a negative 1. I got four zeros right here, so I need to stack them four times on zero. One, two, three, four. You kind of want to be careful on how you draw your X's or your dots, mainly because you want to draw, make sure all your X's are the same height, all your dots are the same size. Otherwise, you end up having uh, towers of X's or dots that are look taller than they really should be. All right, then with all my zeros now, it's actually a good idea to kind of mark these off. I've got four zeros. Next, I've got two twos. There are two, and another two. Three threes. Stack three threes here. One, two, three. That needs to look a little nicer. There we go. I got a five and a six. All right, so my five and six. How many sevens do I got here? One, two, three, four, five sevens. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then I got two nines right here, so I'm going to stack two X's on the nines. And guys, this is this is a box plot right here. Or not a box plot, I'm sorry, a dot plot. Um, it's also known as a line plot, mainly because there's a number line and you plot how many numbers you're seeing above it. I used X's instead of dots because X's kind of form a box shape and it's easier to keep my X's the same size than my dots. If you want to use dots, that's fine. That kind of is the name of the plot, dot plots. So what's really easy to see here is how many, how many negative fives did I have in my data? How many negative fours? I had two negative fours in my data. Uh, it's really easy to see the mode from a dot plot. You can see that 7 right here. It has the highest stack, so it's the mode. And you can kind of see where our data is centering around pretty easy. And it looks like it's kind of around this area between 2 and 3. Uh, so it's a really good visual of where our data is and where the center is. It's really easy to see how spread out our data is too. And that's kind of the perks uh, to dot plots. So here's a dot plot that I'm giving you. Let's, let's talk about reading a dot plot for a second. Uh, this is the number of video games owned that we uh, asked a bunch of students a while back. This is the number of video games owned by each student. You'll see here that I had four students who owned zero video games. I uh, had two, uh, one student who owned two video games, uh, or three video games. I had two students owning three video games. I had three students owning five video games two students owning seven video games, and so on and so forth. So let me ask you a few questions about this. I'll do my best to keep this dot plot on the screen while I scroll down. How many students owned three video games? Well, that's not too hard. Uh, this is one, two, three. Well, how many owned three video games? That's, that's two students. Two students owned three video games. How many students, this is a trickier question, how many students owned ten or more video games? Well, I have to go up here to 10. 1, 2, 3, or more. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because everyone here and over this way owns a video game. So how many, how many students own 10 or more? Well, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 students. So here I've got 10 students. Owning 10 or more video games. And it's actually not hard nowadays, mainly because of all the apps on your phone and all that. And here we can analyze the data. Well, where's the middle of our data? You know, what's the minimum? What's the maximum? What's the mode? This is really easy to see all this data from our dot plot. The question is now, can you find the mean and the median as well? We're going to get to that in a little bit more detail in a minute. All right, so now we've talked about reading dot plots and creating dot plots. Uh, I've got a bunch of data here looking at the average high temperature in Chicago in January over two weeks. Pretty cold there in January. Chicago gets pretty, pretty cold. So I'd like you guys to create a, a dot plot of your own right now. Go ahead and pause the video, make a number line, and just start plotting these points out. Go one at a time. Make sure you cross them off as you go so that you know which ones you've plotted and which ones 
you haven't. So go ahead and pause the video now and give that a shot. All right, you should have made your own dot plot now. Hopefully you titled it, right, Average High Temperature in Chicago in January. Uh, it's a good, good idea to title it. I've already got my title up top, so I don't have it down here below. But this is basically what you should have here. Let's see if I can get my – there we go. To have something like this. And this is a really good idea to check. How many data points do I have here on my dot plot? I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now I should go back and check my data. Do I have 14 data points? Well, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Well, I know at least that I've got 14 and 14 data. Chances are I've got everything plotted. And it's a good idea to double check and make sure everything's plotted again. But this is the correct answer here. Your dot plot should look like this. If it doesn't, let's go correct our mistake and then maybe write a note to the side of what your mistake was so that you don't make that same mistake again. All right, time to go back through our notes, highlight those important parts of your notes, and ask any questions as well as summarize. Make your notes tidy, guys. Make them neat. Make them organized. I'm going to stop this video here. You're going to answer a question and then you're going to watch the next video.